All right, and on this right triangle, the only information that you're provided is that B equals 71 degrees and B equals 24. So when you're gonna be doing these types of problems, please make sure you have a picture of the triangle written out, and then let's just fill in the information. So this angle B is 71 degrees, and B equals 24. Now, remember there's a couple things. This is a right angle, so that obviously is gonna equal 90 degrees, right? Um, so therefore, we need to find our missing angle as well, because remember, all a triangle, we can easily miss out the third missing angle, because a triangle, all angles add up to 180. So we have 90 plus uh, 71 is going to be 161, so we'll have 19 degrees. Does everybody follow me on how I did that? Just the old, good old geometry, just going back at us again, right? So now, what we need to do is we need to find the length, the missing lengths. Now you could say, oh, it's a right angle, right triangle, so we could use Pythagorean theorem, but our problem is we only have one missing length, right? Or we, I'm sorry, we have two <coughs> missing lengths. So to find one of our missing lengths, either A or C, I'm gonna have to use our trig properties. Now, I don't care which one you guys wanna choose, but does anybody wanna figure out A or C, which one first? A. A, okay. So if I wanna figure out A, now remember guys, I'm gonna have to, well, I could either use angle A or angle B. Let's just, since we were given angle B first, let's use that as our, uh, let's use that angle. So I could say, um, so which trig property can I use with the angle here, this side, and this side length? Tangent. tangent, exactly. You guys remember, whenever you're not dealing with your hypotenuse, you're gonna be dealing with tangent. And then you remember, all right, if tangent, which side is my opposite, which side is my adjacent? Remember, your adjacent always connects your angle with the 90 degree angle. So A is going to be my adjacent and B is going to be my opposite. So what I can say is tangent of my angle 71 degrees is equal to 24 over A. So now I need to solve for A. So how do you solve for an angle when you have A? Yes? Um, so whenever, why do you think that you said that A was adjacent the way that I always like to explain it is the hypotenuse is always your longest leg, right? And it's always directly across from the 90 degree angle. Your adjacent always connects your angle to the 90 degree angle. And your opposite is always directly across from your angle. So whatever degree you're letting you solve it for, you choose? Yeah, exactly. If I was going to do tangent of, of 19 degrees, A is my opposite and B would be my adjacent. Okay. Oh, it's all according to what? Your angles. Okay. That's right. That makes sense. So now, so how do I solve for an angle when I have, or how do I solve for a value when my variable is now on the bottom? Well, I have, first have to get it off the bottom, right? So let's multiply by A on both sides. So therefore, I'm left with A tan of 71 degrees I'll put that in there, equals 24. Now, we're just going to treat this like a term and divide. So I'll divide by tangent of 71 degrees. So therefore, A equals 24 divided by tan of 71 degrees. So we'll just take our lovely calculator and just make sure my degree is correct. So I'll just do 24 divided by tangent of 71, and I get 8.26. So now, ladies and gentlemen, here's where it kind of gets to the point where what Sam did earlier kind of opens it up. So now I can say that A equals 8.26 rounded. All right? So ladies and gentlemen, if I want to find C, I could use the Pythagorean theorem, right? Or if you really are just sick of the Pythagorean theorem and you don't want to use it, just use another trig identity. So I could say, well, if I want to figure out what C is, you could use either angle B or angle A again. Let's just use angle B just to, uh, just to can stay consistent with 71 degrees. So if I want to figure out this, I could either use the cosine with my new degree, or I could use the sine with my opposite side. So I'll do sine of 71 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse, 24 over my 
C. Okay, and then what I notice when I do this math again, C equals 24 divided by sine of 7 So basically three. they kind of just like switch places to sine of 71. Yeah, I mean you can see I did it here step by step. I just decided not to do it over there. Okay. Same thing. Yes? If, okay, you're doing it by how like the trig functions are, right? Yep. Why is the tan of 71 degrees equal 24 over A? Tan of 71 degrees, right? Opposite over adjacent. Is equals your opposite. So the opposite of my angle oh, is 24. Angle. Of my angle, yes. So yeah, it's always it's, it's always going to be relative to the angle that you're choosing. If I would have done tangent of 19 degrees, it would have been eight point, it would have been A over 24. Okay. okay. Why do they switch? Because it, like I said, it, the opposite for this one, your adjacent is your side that's adjacent to your angle. Here, this side is adjacent. C is always going to be your hypotenuse. And well, yes, C, I mean, or more normally we'll always label C the hypotenuse, but yes, your this your hypotenuse never changes, but your opposite and your adjacent do. Okay. So when I do 24 divided by sine of 71, I get 25.3. Twenty five point three eight. Twenty five point three eight, yes. So you're you're doing this, are you doing this solving for the angle, not the base angle? They asked us in this problem to um, find all our missing values for our triangle. So therefore we figured out what A was just by adding up all the angles in a triangle. And then by using our trig properties, we were able to figure out the length of A and now the length of C. So therefore, now we know every value for our triangle. Make sense? Yeah. 